Hi, my name is Tiana Esperanza, and today we're going to break down the lyrics for my song, Lewis. Uh, the inspiration for it, I was watching the documentary Black Power Mixtape, and through that documentary, I uh, discovered this man named Louis H. McCaw, who had a bookstore in Harlem. And um, I was so inspired by his poetry and by his movement that I wrote a song about it. Now this song is about a man named Lewis, Lewis H. McCaw to be exact. Now Lewis owned a little bookstore in Harlem. And one day while he was sitting in his bookstore, some black boys came in with their fists up screaming, black power, black power. He said, look sons, I'd like to straighten you out. He said, black is beautiful, but black ain't power. Knowledge is power, sons. The most pure creative writing experience I've ever had was uh, creating Lewis. I watched the documentary and within maybe three hours the song was written. One thing that helped was Lewis, you know, he had a poem and part of that poem I used in the song. But as someone who's not as focused or well versed in the composition side of things, it was a really amazing experience because I just suddenly pulled out my guitar and didn't even do play guitar. I played a bass line on a guitar and came up with the flow of the words really quickly. And um, it was it was simple and it was probably the most special writing experience I've ever had. So I think I. I said to someone, you know, I, I needed that experience, though, to continue, and I think that happens for a lot of artists. You have that one moment where you are a conduit and you feel it's so, uh, it's so visceral that you, you hope that you can get back to that moment or that feeling again for the rest of your life as a writer. I think that Lewis he was visionary because his bookstore was about empowering and, and educating uh, black men and women in Harlem. And, you know, young black men and women sharing ideas about their freedoms. And, you know, he was, he was integral to that by starting his bookstore and by sourcing all of these books from all over the world. His bookstore was the foundation of a, of a greater purpose, and there's nothing more visionary than that, I think. So you can be as black as a crow, you can be as white as snow, but if you don't know and you ain't got no dough, you can't go and that's for show. Lewis was a changing point for me. I. I didn't realize that I could produce something so black because I grew up in such a white community of Cape Cod. Growing up on Cape Cod was was tough as as what they say a tragic mulatto because um, there wasn't representation for me in so many different aspects and also growing up in a Christian environment there's there can be a lot of racism mixed in with um, with religion, and I felt I had that experience at times. And through all of that, um, I feel like Lewis was somehow a reclaiming of my identity. Uh, Lewis was, I think, I would consider in many ways my first role model. One of the reasons why Lewis changed my inner world was because he was speaking to things that I, I, I knew. And I, I knew them because they are part of me. And I had never seen somebody voice that before. And um, it gave me the empowerment to, to speak up. And I felt that he was going against the grain. He was pretty open about you know, questioning religion and growing up in the religious community I did, I certainly was experiencing that. 
but he talks about how religion in the black community is a, you know, is a, I guess you could say for some people is a point of contention. And Lewis would try and dissect that and question that. And, you know, going back to the larger conversation is about, am I good enough to represent what I, what I believe? Am I good enough to represent black thought in any way? Do I, you know, do I have to represent black thought entirely? Like that's such a big thing and I was 13, you know what I mean? So I think um, I felt like Lewis's ideas gave me an okay to challenge what I had always been challenging. Now Lewis also said that when the white man landed here, he brought two weapons. One was the Bible and the other was the gun. If he didn't humble you with the Bible, he crumbled you with the gun. And they're still praising the Lord and passing ammunition all over the world. I definitely think that art is my weapon, like how Lewis says that the white men brought the Bible and the gun. Um, the Bible is a, is a systemic weapon. It's almost in, insidious. And uh, the gun is more immediate and new. And art is, I feel, more powerful even than religion. And I think that's why I fell in love with music and with art was because I have read, at least, um, and especially as a writer, how the pen has been the weapon and the creator of societies. And art is, uh, is a tool for progress. So this verse, I'm talking, I'm starting to express how I feel, and I've just stated everything that Lewis is talking about, and now now I'm saying, now, as I was listening to Lewis's words, I came up with a couple of my own. The human collective strives to be connected. Our minds strive the respect of intellect. Our souls, no regret. Our bodies, the joy of no neglect. We are constrained by societal norms born with individuality to only conform, and the cycle goes on in sync. So I think what Lewis is trying to say here is, live life, love life, be smart, but take your peace, don't play your part. In one of my songs, I have a song called Pick a Stone, and it's about um, being interracial and always feeling caught in between. And if I had the chance to meet Lewis, I would ask him, at least the first thing that comes to mind, I would ask him if he feels alone as well. I think I would ask him that um, in terms of, you know, how he viewed the world in such a, we live in a polarized time now, but to be am amongst all these brilliant thinkers and I just wonder how, how he would feel in comparison, if he even bothered to compare. <laughs> Cause you can be as black as a crow. You can be as white as snow. But if you don't 